Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa on a Tuesday morning. Mm. Liverpool against Real Madrid tonight. The Reds against the Galacticos. And of course, um, people have called it different things. A revenge mission. Um, Real Madrid must win. It's a, it's a revenge mission against Mo Salah and Sergio Ramos. Ramos will not play. Well, Klopp says, we're not in a revenge mission. We're going to play our game as we play normally. So, I have to guess later on the show. Both of them, while in Nigeria, were major players in the sports reportage in Nigeria. There used to be major presenters, sports, on um, major TV stations in uh, Nigeria. Now they are both in London. One, a major Liverpool play, um, fan. The other one, a major Real Madrid fan. They'll take it headlong on the show this morning. Before I go to them, or introduce them, Aminat Idris, who is said to be eight months pregnant, won the first gold for Team Lagos at the ongoing National Sports Festival in Edo State. Idris, who put an inspiring outing, won the gold in the mixed Pumase category in Taekwondo alongside her male counterpart, Aurora Rakib. She also won silver in the female team Pumsai category and an individual bronze in the same category. This makes her one of the leading medalists of the festival. Similarly, in the 2018 edition of the competition, Aminat Idris won a bronze medal in the individual female in Taekwondo team pair. She also won silver alongside Aurora Rakib. In other events at Edo 2020, Team Lagos won silver in the female team six side cricket, while their male counterpart won a bronze medal. Edo won the gold medal of the six side cricket event at the festival. Edo beat Quara and Lagos to silver and bronze medals. Also, Rachel Tonjo, the record holder in the swimming event, won a gold medal for the hosting state, Edo State. <laughs> Now, I'll be to one Two, two, Mama and Zaya. Two, and I'll be a mother of Kansby. Please get ready. On both sides, on the first side, then touch it. You're wondering why I'm showing you Taekwondo this morning. Well, first off, my daughter will be 13 in April. She's the second blue belt already in Taekwondo. I know how stressful it is. And I'm asking myself, if I was that woman's husband, would I let her go? She's eight months pregnant. In that event, I just showed you now, she won a gold medal in that event. But would I have let her go? Eight months? I don't know. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo will on Tuesday, today, declare the Edo 2020 National Sports Festival open. According to the program of events for the opening ceremony, Prof. Shibaju will pay homage to the Oba of Benin and Wari II before proceeding to the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium for the opening of the national sports event. The program starts at 7 p.m. and runs for two hours, will showcase the rich Edo cultural heritage, with musician Fireboy also performing at the event. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday Dari is expected to officially welcome the athletes, while Governor Gordon Nabasiki and his deputy Philip Schwaibo will also speak on the festival. To ensure compliance with the COVID-19 protocols, there will be restrictions to the Samuel Ogimudia Stadium with people gaining access with invitation cards. 
while states will be allowed to present only 20 athletes for the ceremony. Now I'll come to my guest this morning. The first one is to be a major player, sports presentation in Nigeria, on a major TV platform in Nigeria, now he's in London. Dele Oshodi Glover is a major Liverpool fan, red all the way. Good morning, Dele. Good morning, Mr. Good morning to you. Okay, and same thing with Ladi, Ladi Egbediru, of course, we call him Lado. Um, he used to be a major player too before he travelled abroad to London. And um, he's a major Real Madrid uh, fan. Hello, Madrid. Good morning, Ladi. Hello, Madrid, Wally. Good morning, football fans. Great to be here. I just showed you a lady who just won gold for Team Lagos at the Edo Sports Festival. She's eight months pregnant. And um, I was asking myself, if I was her husband, would I have let her go? I think uh, Wale, I might do the same thing, but uh, because when a woman is eight months pregnant, she's in a very delicate position. So why allow her go compete for a sport that is combative, like a taekwondo? But it's all right, it's her choice. And for me, for her to have been able to do that, I think she gets a play of the day from it. Yeah, Dele, um, Farah is a, is a second blue belt, actually, with 13 in April. And um, I know how stressful um, um, taekwondo is, and you know too. And um, letting your wife go eight months pregnant? Wow. Um, obviously, the medical team on ground would have certified her fit to compete for this event. So, um, if it was authenticated by the medical team, I guess it's all well and good for her and her family. And uh, like you said, uh, what if she didn't take part in this event and then she realized that she could have actually won gold at the end of the day? You'd have regretted as her husband if you had felt that almost. If I allowed her to take part in this event, she would have won gold. I know with the gold medal comes um, she will be now, you know now. Of course, that's right. <laughs> okay, before I come to the guys, what is slugging out this morning? Liverpool are not looking for revenge when they face Real Madrid in Tuesday's Champions League quarterfinal first leg and will only focus on getting another step closer to a seventh European crown, manager Jurgen Klopp has said. Now, Real Madrid ran out 3-1 winners against Liverpool in their last meeting in the 2018 final. But the result was overshadowed by Sergio Ramos's challenge on Mo Salah, causing an injury to the Egyptian forward who ended up leaving the field in tears. Now, Klopp conceded the quarterfinal draw brought back memories of the game in Kiev, but said he was moved on and his players will be treating the game like any other European knockout tie. Again, Klopp. Oh, my, my, my motivation is highest level because it's Champions League, we want to go to the next round, we play Real Madrid, that had nothing to do with 2018. But uh, when we, I got the draw, because the first time that we played in Real Madrid since then, of course I, I remembered the game and um, I said it after the game that time, um, if somebody asked me in a press conference a week later, maybe a month later, um, if I would invite Sergio Ramos to my well, for this then, 60th birthday, I would said no. Meanwhile, I would think about it again. So it's not because he's a great footballer, but of course, as I said that I that I didn't like what happened that night. Um, it was for us a strange night, but it's, it's a completely normal. But it's long ago, and we, I cannot get that feeling back, that anger or whatever. Um, so I don't even try. Uh, what I try is to prepare my team for tomorrow to show how good we are as a football team. So, um, in a strange season, obviously, in a difficult season for us, but we want to um, show how good we are. Now, Ladi, you just heard again Klopp. He says in 2018, if you had told him to invite Sergio Ramos to his party, he would have said no. But now he's forgiving him. And he's not a revenge mission. Do you believe him, Ladi? Do you believe him? Yeah, he, he's... Yeah, you can't be a revenge mission because while we all know that you, there is no game that is the same, you know, despite the fact that it's two teams that are playing together, but there is no game that is the same. The game is always different. The preparation is always different. The guys that are going to play the game is always different from the people that played the game the first time, the last time out. Don't forget last time out, we had Cristiano Ronaldo, but today there is no Cristiano Ronaldo. All dependence for goals for Real Madrid is on Karim Benzema. And Sergio Ramos that caused so much controversy last time and 2018 is out of the game right now. So it's going to be a very different game entirely. And for me, it's all about the team that really is fired up, that wants to win it tonight, that really get their acts right, that's going to take the game. It doesn't matter uh, if uh, Sergio Ramos is playing or not, but I still feel Real Madrid, they have a team going forward, despite the fact that they're going to make the services of uh, uh, Eden Hazard, who a lot of people believe so much in when he was brought in from Chelsea.
Now, um, um, Dele, let's come to you on this one. Now, um, despite the fact that the only problem Liverpool might have tonight is Karim Benzema, your defence is not very nice at this point, Dele. You don't have a, a solid defence as you had in the past. There is no Virgil van Dijk. There are no major players in your defence. And you have if Karim Benzema, who is in smoking form to deal with tonight. Uh, Wally, it couldn't have come at a better time for Liverpool to take on Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid have a major athlete's heel right now um, because they are short of key players. Now, um, whether you like it or not, you can't take away the fact that um, um, Alexander-Arnold, Nat Phillips, Ozan Kabak and Robertson have kept clean sheets over the past four games. So I think they've gelled. Uh, they have chemistry now. Uh, but um, these four players I've mentioned don't have what it takes to hold down someone like Karim Benzema, who has well over 260 goals for Real Madrid. So um, if we're going to place it this way, attack for attack, trust me, Liverpool will take Real Madrid to the cleaners based on current form. I'm talking about the likes of Diego Jota, um, Mohamed Salah, Roberto Firmino, and Seydou Mane. If those four players can work together and it works out for Liverpool, um, I'm very, very convinced that Liverpool will take Real Madrid to the cleaners. So it might be, score me, I score you. Who scores more? Who wants it more? Just like Laddie said. But trust me, I'm telling him and the whole world that Liverpool want it more today. Laddie, they yeah, just because mentioned Liverpool, it now. They are yet to get, they, yeah. they, they, Liverpool, they are yet to get to the level of Real Madrid, so they will, they will definitely want it more. Yes, I'm no doubt. I'm going to tell you something, Dele, and that's a, and that's a fact that, uh, you see, that's, we are missing so many great players in the squad, no doubt. But if you talk on, uh, about current form, I think the only player that is really playing at a very high level for Liverpool right now is Diego Jota. Then you might think about someone like uh, uh, Sadio Mane and uh, uh, Mo Salah. But for me, I think the major threat for Liverpool is Diego Jota. And uh, <laughs> I tell you something, uh, Dele, Diego Jota alone is going to get the job done. You guys need the team to play together. Yes, Lado. So much synergy. Lado, I'll come to you. Get the job done tonight. Lado, I'll come to you on this. Jota. Now, when you, you lose a player like Cristiano Ronaldo, you lose five players at the same time, no doubt. And they brought in That's Eden right. Hazard, record-buying Eden Hazard. The guy comes to Real and becomes glass. How do you solve that? Well, nobody saw that coming, Wale. I think it has to show that uh, there's so much physicality in the Premiership. And that's one thing I've been talking about for a very long time, that the physical nature of the Premiership game, it tends to take a toll on this guy after, you know, the game. And for, for me, a player like Eddie Neza, a lot of people had so much belief in him when he was coming to Real Madrid because he got so much quality. But he's yet to play 14 games this season. It is that bad for him. But I know he's going to bounce back most definitely. He will definitely bounce back. If he doesn't feature in today's game, there's every possibility that he will be available for the return leg. Okay, now, then let me come to you on this one. In the past, a few years ago, the most lethal three-man prunched attack in Europe was in Liverpool. It was Firmino, Mo Salah, and Sadio Mane. Somehow they lost their bite. Their mojo is gone. And then somebody comes in, in Diogo Jota, who comes to put a little bite into the attack, but it's not there yet. But Firmino and Salah and Sadio Mane, nobody is scared of them anymore. Um, yes, I think I'd have to accept that the fear factor might have gone. But hey, if you look at the team sheet and you see Diego Jota, Firmino, Mane and Salah starting at the same time, my brother, you need to worry. I know Ladi in his seat over there is worried that, ah, what's Liverpool going to bring on later this evening? But hey, <laughs> it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that, in all honesty. Diego Jota has scored so many goals that have lost counts. Diego Jota has been fortunate at Liverpool. Let's not take away the fact that Liverpool also have their own major injury worries. Lots of first-team players are out of the squad. But hey, injuries are part of football. I don't think we should make injuries an excuse. Um, it's going to be 11 against 11. The better team will win. But hey, I rep Liverpool and I believe that they'll do the needful later this evening. Now, Laddie, um, it's the first leg. Most times in football, the first leg actually determines the end of the day. This is like the morning of the game. You have to make it right. Um, what do you think Real Madrid should do or can do right to ensure they get the first leg in the bag and just walk, walk around the second leg later? Well, there is nothing they can do. They just have to do what they've been doing over time. You know, get the guys in the right frame of mind, sack them up. And I tell you something, Wale, experience is going to come into play today. Don't forget, we are talking about a Real Madrid side that have been there, done that for so many years, going up against the Liverpool side. I'm not saying that the Liverpool side doesn't have experience. They have experience. Yeah, they equally have experience. After all, they won the 2019 Champions League before Bayern won the, the past one. So I feel they have experience on their side. But 
I still feel that Real Madrid might just have a tiny bit of an edge, you know, going into the race game. And, and uh, uh, what's it called? Federico Valverde is back in the squad right now. Tony Cruz is back in the squad. I think the only the two players that uh, let me say three players are missing right now: Danny Cavaya, Sergio Ramos, and Eddie Nazar. No doubt, quality players. But despite the fact they are still missing all these quality players, they still go get the job done. Do what they do best, and uh, the return leg will actually decide who's going to move to the next round. The game will be decided with today's game. Dele, what can you guys guys do to ensure you don't walk alone tonight? Wally, Liverpool thrashed Arsenal over the weekend. <laughs> They're in very high spirits. They know what to do. Um, Jurgen Klopp has come out to say that it's not a revenge mission for the team. But I know some of those players have it at the back of their mind that they want to beat Real Madrid at all costs. Likes of Mohamed Salah has a whole lot to prove to the world that, hey, he was taken out of the finals in 2018. This is another finals for him. Um, you know that the only way to make the Champions League for Liverpool, the only realistic way to make the Champions League for Liverpool next season is to win the FA Champions League this season. Amongst Between these two teams, we have 19 trophies. Real Madrid has 13. Liverpool has six. It doesn't come bigger or better than this. So I know we're going to have fireworks later this evening. Thank you very much, Dele Oshodi Global. Hopefully tonight you will not walk alone. Thank you very much, Liverpool fan and big sports analyst. Dele Oshodi Global, thank you very much. And thank you very much, Ladi Egbediwe Lado. Hala Madrid. Let's hope tonight you can actually holler tonight. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure having me on the show, Wally. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll probably call you guys tomorrow to <laughs> either wish somebody congratulations and tell somebody it happens. It's football. Football happens. Thank you very much, guys. It's the Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I had Ladi Egbediri on the show, Lado, and um, Dele Oshodi Glover. Ladi, a Real Madrid fan, Dele, a Liverpool fan, both sports analysts while in Nigeria, both in the UK now. And hopefully, somebody will win tonight. Okay. Now, Everton manager Carlo Ancelotti insisted his side are still in the fight for European qualification despite conceding a late leveler to Crystal Palace. Palace substitute Miki Bashuai equalized in the 86th minute. Placing the ball beyond Robin Olsen in the bottom corner. Returning from injury ever since Amis Rodriguez had given the Toffees a deserved lead with a superb right-footed strike in the 56th minute. The result leaves Everton eighth, five points off fourth place West Ham, having played one game fewer. Palace's safety is all but guaranteed, the draw leaving them 12 points clear of the bottom three with eight games remaining. Everton boss Ancelotti says Richarlison and Carver Lemon will bounce back after misses against Palace. This is a miraculous news for me this morning, and I had to say this one this morning before I go on the show today. Now, 12-year-old skateboarding prodigy, her name is Sky Brown, said she has fully recovered from a life-threatening fall last May and plans to broaden her horizons by adding surfing to our Olympic schedule. Brown, who will be the only female member of Team Great Britain when skateboarding makes its highly anticipated debut in July, suffered skull fractures and a broken wrist and hand after she fell down from a half-pipe in Southern California. She was taken by helicopter to the hospital where she underwent surgery and her father, Stewart, let said she was lucky to be alive. Brown said the experience has only added fuel to a considerable fire. A spokesperson for Brown said it is still possible for her to qualify for Britain's surfing team for Tokyo, but she would need to compete in the upcoming British Cup and it's unclear she will be allowed to do so. If not, she will have to wait until the Pogi Games come around in three short years. When the Los Angeles Games roll out in 2028, she will still be a teenager. She can stay healthy. Her potential is unlimited. Like every Olympic athlete, Brown was born to a Japanese mother and a British father was forced to cope with the disappointment of the one-year delay of the Tokyo Games, but the Tokyo Games begin July 23rd. So now we just have a better show. Okay, of course she wants to be at the Games despite the fact that she had a life-threatening injury. Good luck to her. That's all we can take on the show today, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa, on a Tuesday morning. Thank you, Ladi Egbedire Lado, and um, Dele Ushodi Global, all the way from the UK. Thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. Of course, I'm joining us same time tomorrow, same station, for Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa, a, a, a midweek thriller, a midweek edition. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.